Hello students, let us start our new session with a new topic which is example based on the previous topic we have covered. A domain of a ferromagnetic ion is in the form of a cube of a side length 1 micrometer. Estimate the number of ion atoms in the domain and the maximum possible dipole moment and magnetization of the domain. The molecular mass of iron is 55 gram per mole and its density is 7.9 gram per centimeter cube. Assume that each iron atom has a dipole moment of 9.27 into 10 raised to minus 24 ampere meter square. Now here we have a cube. One side length is given 1 micrometer so its volume is side cube so that is 10 raise to minus 6 meter cube that is 10 raise to minus 18 meter cube and 10 raise to minus 12 centimeter cube now to get its mass its volume into density volume we have calculated density is given so density is given 10 raise to minus 12 centimeter uh, density is given 7.9 gram per centimeter cube so 7.9 gram centimeter per centimeter cube into 10 raise to minus 12 centimeter cube. So that is 7.9 into 10 raise to minus 12 gram. Now uh, I am atom has a Avogadro number 6 into 6.023 into 10 raise to 23 of the mass 55 gram. So total number of atom N is mass 7.9 into 10 raise to minus 12 into Avogadro number 6 into 10 raise 6.023 into 10 raise to 23 divided by its mass 55. So number of atoms are 8.65 into 10 raise to 10. Now we need to determine maximum dipole moment. Maximum dipole moment only can be possible when all atoms are in the same direction of given magnetic field. So that maximum dipole moment is number of atoms into the atom moment single dipole moment. So that is N into single dipole moment 9.5. 27 into 10 raise to minus 24. So that maximum dipole moment is 8 into 10 raise to minus 13 ampere meter cube. Now to get its magnetization, its maximum dipole moment divided by domain volume. So magnetization is 8 into 10 raise to minus 13 divided by volume 10 raise to minus 18 meter cube. So that would be 8 into 10 raise to 5 ampere per meter. Now let us focus on to the next point permanent magnets and electromagnets. Permanent magnets we are going to design by the ferromagnets or why we are using a ferromagnet property. If ferromagnet property is remain constant for a longer time period at the room temperature. So we can say that that substance can be a permanent magnet. There are a number of ways to design a permanent magnet. Initially, uh, earlier days we are using a iron rod. We are placing the iron rod in south north direction and hammer it repeatedly. So it can, it can be a permanent magnet. Instead of the soft iron also we are using a steel material. Uh, we are holding a steel rod and we are stroking it with a one end of the bar. If we are taking a north pole of the bar magnet, so from that side only continuously stroke over it for the number of times. So it can be a permanent magnet. Now the efficient way we are using, we are using a ferromagnet road to make a permanent magnet. Place that ferromagnetic road in a solenoid and give an external field. While we are providing external field, current starts to generate and as the current is present, 
magnetic intensity h start to generate and based and while this strong magnetic intensity is available ferromagnet can be a permanent magnet so magnetic field of a solenoid can magnetize the rod for that as we have observed a hysteresis loop in the ferromagnet for ferromagnetism this will be affected over here that hysteresis curve allow to select a suitable material for the permagnet permanent magnet the material should have a high retentivity if high retentivity is that so magnet can be a strong it should be a high coercitivity so that a magnetization cannot be erased even though by a stray magnetic fields temperature fluctuations or mechanical damage so here the material should have a high permeability also for that steel is preferred for that generally steel has a slightly lower retentivity than a soft iron but by comparing its correct corrosivity generally for by comparing its corrosivity generally we are using a steel instead of the soft iron another material also we can choose to design a permanent magnet that is uh, alnico cobalt steel tyconel now to design a core of the electromagnets these are made of the ferromagnetic material which have a high permeability and a low retentivity soft iron is suitable to design a core of the electromagnet by placing a soft rod in a solenoid and passing a current we can increase its magnetism of a solenoid by 1000 fold when we switch off the solenoid current the magnetism is effectively switch off since the soft iron core has a low retentivity which we can observed in the diagram in certain application material goes through an ac cycle of the magnetization for a long period this is the case in which we are using for the transformer cores and telephone diaphragms because as the switch off current supply is off their magnetization effect should be off so in the center in in electromagnetic Uh, initially we have defined for the magnets but while we go for electromagnets why we want a combined effect of electricity and magnetization or magnetic fields we want that when power supply is off their magnetic field effect is also would be off so for that we are using a ferromagnets material and this these are utilized in a transformer in a uh, telephone diaphragms in which the hysteresis curve of this material should be narrow energy dissipated and the heating effect should be uh, low material must have a high retentivity to lower eddy currents eddy current losses electromagnets are used in electric bells loud speaker transformers telephone diaphragms giant electromagnets are used in cranes to lift machinery and bulk quantities of iron and steel right so here we can observe how the permanent magnets can be designed and for the electromagnets in which electric power and magnetic effects we want to correlate for that how ferromagnet ism a ferromagnetic material can be used so here we are going to end this session as well we are going to end this chapter hope you understood the whole chapter thoroughly thank you